हेलो एवरीवन अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम टू माय कोर्स फिजिक्स वन दिस कोर्स इज जनरली मेड फॉर अंडर ग्रेजुएट लेवल बीटेक डिग्री स्टूडेंट्स माय सेल्फ गोपाल चक्रवर्ती असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजिक्स ग्रेटर कोलकाता कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड मैनेजमेंट बारिपुर सो यू कैन पर्सनली मीट मी एट कॉलेज प्रिमिस ग्राउंड फ्लोर फिजिक्स लैब और यू कैन ऑल्सो सेंड मी अ मेल रिगार्डिंग योर डाउट एंड क्वेरी फॉर दिस टॉपिक and the topic uh, that i have discussed through my video lessons so uh, you just send me a mail to my given mail address that is god physics 6@gmail.com and gopal. chakraborty underscore g k c e m at the rate gis group dot org i have a youtube channel i have already upload lots of video related to the subject physics 1 as per macau curriculum so the students uh, you can check those videos uh, that will be very helpful for your preparation for the subject physics 1 so uh, you can subscribe my youtube channel so i am the subject teacher for this today's course now the course pages are www.markoutexam.net and www.markoutwb.ac.in the syllabus for the subject physics 1 is already uploaded in the university website so students you may can download the syllabus from the university web page the title of this course is physics 1 the subject code is bsph101 it is under the category of basic science course and it has a credit for three lecture per week and one tutorial per week the course is generally made for undergraduate level btech degree students of first year so computer science civil mechanical these departmental students will going to study this course for their odd semester and alternatively electrical and electronics these departmental students we are going to study this course in the even semester so for both the odd semester and even semester the syllabus is same uh, only the subject code will change that in that case the code will be bsph201 now uh, the topic that i will going to discuss in today's class uh, application of schrodinger equation particle in one dimensional potential box so uh, this topic is also under module 4 that is quantum mechanics so the uh, prerequisite for these uh, today's topics are elementary idea of quantum mechanics and fundamental idea of mathematical calculations and quantum mechanical operators the course objective is 
idea about application of Schrodinger equations. So uh, the application is one dimensional potential box in the presence of that particle. So particle in one dimensional potential box. After completion of this course, students will able to know about application of Schrodinger equation particle in one dimensional potential box and they will also able to calculate energy eigenvalue, normalization factor, probability, degeneracy corresponding to a particle in one dimensional potential box. So uh, these are the possible course outcome. So now, uh, as today I am going to discuss about the applications of Schrodinger equations, uh, which is basically based on the last two video class lessons. So uh, you must need to know what is your uh, time dependent and time independent Schrodinger equation, both for one dimensional case as well as for three dimensional case. Uh, because without knowing that Schrodinger equation, uh, the applications or the new problems is not possible to solve. So uh, the students, those who have missed those videos, please go through that video once again. Uh, so it will be helpful for you to understand to this class. Now, uh, as I am here talking about uh, the applications of Schrodinger equation that is particle in one dimensional potential box. So uh, you need to know what is potential box, okay? So that means you consider two boundary having height infinite, okay? So one boundary are uh, placed at origin O and another one at certain distance L or A. So uh, the both the boundary uh, world that have a height infinity so that means uh, it will uh, behave like a box and the particle will be always within that region of that boundary or that box. So uh, it will not possible for that particle to move the outside the boundary region. So chance of getting the particle is less outside the boundary region. So uh, you can only find the, there is a possibility or probability will be maximum for that particle when the particle is considered at within the box or within the boundary. So uh, as the potential height that I have considered here as a infinity, so it will not possible for the particle to jump out, okay? Uh, so uh, it will uh, just uh, rip, it will just hit the wall and move back and forth motion within that boundary. Now uh, our objective is to find out what is the uh, wave function psi, the value of wave function psi for this particle under within this one dimensional potential box. So how you will find out that first you have to consider that what is the uh, what potential value some boundary condition of that potential so as we have considered here within that box the potential is zero and at boundary and or outside the boundary it will be infinite okay so this is the boundary condition and also you need to consider your time independent schrodinger equation that is d2 psi dx2 plus twice me by h cut square equals to zero as v is uh, goes to zero within that boundary so mm, now uh, you try to solve this differential equation will give you some value of x okay now that value is consists of some constant so after putting the boundary condition you uh, can calculate what is the value of that constant so uh, now you substitute that constant which actually uh, using the condition of normalization factor so uh, 
and this putting the boundary constant value will give you ultimate solution of the wave function psi for this particle in one dimensional potential box so now i will show you how you are going to derive this step by step so uh, let us consider the motion of the particle in a hollow rectangular box along the x axis a uh, non relativistic region the origin is at one corner of the box and x axis is perpendicular to the parallel opposite wall as shown in figure so we assume that the walls of the box are rigid hard and elastic then the particle will rebound in the box without any loss of kinetic energy secondly the wall of the box are non permeable uh, so the particle then will remain confined in the box as the energy of the particle is loss uh, then the potential energy outside the box so so this condition as per our diagram given here can be written as v is a function of x so v value will be 0 within the position x between 0 to a okay and secondly the potential value will be infinite if x is less than equals to 0 and greater than equals to a so as i have discussed you you can see the diagram is here so uh, the within that potential box so the particle will be exist and as the wall height of the box is infinite so it will not possible for the particle uh, to present outside the box so uh, for that condition you can say that uh, the wave function will exist only for the region within the box because here the potential is zero and if you consider for outside the box where the potential is infinite as uh, the chance of getting the particle is less in that case so uh, no a uh, wave function can be derived uh, for that region so uh, here you have to solve the equation schrodinger wave equation uh, only for the case v equals to 0 uh, in the region within the box now uh, the way how can you find out the wave equation that you have considered that since inside the box the potential v of x equals to 0 uh, the particle is free okay so uh, therefore it is not acted upon by a force field as v is 0 so uh, the schrodinger time independent equation for this particle is minus h car square by twice m d2 psi dx2 equals to e into e psi so uh, here h uh, car square is the reduced planck constant m is the mass of the particle psi is the possible wave function which represent the space time behavior of that particle within this potential box e is the energy total energy of that particle so uh, now rearranging you can write d2 psi dx2 plus twice m e by h car square psi equals to 0 okay so this is the schrodinger time independent one dimensional wave equation so here we consider the particle is moving only along x direction so uh, here the equation is written in terms of x 
so now uh, 2 m e by h cut square here m the mass of the particle is constant e is the total energy that is also constant and h cut square is a reduced planck constant that is also constant so um, you can substitute this all the constant by a single constant so uh, we consider here that constant is k square uh, so substituting that value we get d2 shy dx2 plus k square shy equals to 0 so where k equals to under root 2 me by h cut square this shows that k is constant for a particular value of energy e of that particle now Uh, the solution of this Schrodinger one-dimensional time-independent equation can be written as psi function of x equals to a sine k x plus b cos k x. So this is the solution of equation d two psi d x two plus k square psi equals to zero. So here, uh, after getting the solution of that psi. Uh, you he see here that solution is consist of two constant. Okay, so uh, the two constant a and b. So uh, to get the ultimate solution of psi, you have to calculate. You have to find out the value of this unknown constant a and b. So how are you going to find out this? That means you need uh, some boundary condition so that after putting that boundary condition, you will able to get that unknown constant value. So uh, as we know that uh, within that potential box, uh, the particle can exist, and outside the potential box, uh, it will not possible for that particle. So. considering that you can write wave function psi will exist at uh, x equals to uh, within 0 and to within a that region so within 0 to a that psi exist and at x equals to a and x equals to 0 psi will be also 0 because Uh, at x equals to zero and x equals to a uh, makes the potential height infinite, so it will not possible for that particle to stay there. So uh, the condition is psi equals to zero at x equals to zero and x equals to a. Now, uh, if you put the first boundary condition that psi is zero. For uh, x equals to zero in the equation in the solution of psi, so from there uh, you get zero equals to a into zero plus b. That means the value of unknown constant term b is equals to zero. So uh, this reduces the solution of psi equals to a sine k x. Now uh, again put the second boundary condition that is. At x equals to a, psi equals to zero. So substituting that, we get a sine k a equals to zero. As the constant a is not equals to zero, so from to satisfy this equation, we can write sine k a equals to zero, or sine k a equals to sine in pi. So comparing both sides, you can write. K a equals to n pi. So uh, k is equals to n pi by a. So where n value is one, two, three, dot dot up to n. But uh, n is not equals to zero. This is not possible, okay? Because for n equals to zero, k will be zero. So also the corresponding total energy of the particle will be zero, which is not possible. Never possible, okay? So uh, what you will get? You will get k equals to n pi by a. So if you substitute that, the wave function for the particle within the region zero to a. Can be written as psi equals to 
a sin n pi x by l now uh, as we know that uh, the value of k is uh, n pi by a uh, and also from the constant that we have considered k square equals to twice m e by h car square so now equating these two will gives us the value of energy so uh, under root twice m e by h car square equals to n pi by a so uh, we can write e the energy equals to n square pi square h cut square by twice m a square so uh, from this equation will give you energy eigenvalues which will depends or vary only with the n square so here uh, you can write e is proportional to n square and that is the energy eigenvalue and these are discrete since uh, h card equals to h by 2 pi so uh, if you substitute that value you will get n square h square by 8 m a square so uh, substituting all these you will get and putting a n value is equals to 1 we get the lowest energy of the particle so the value of lowest energy e1 equals to pi square h car square by 2 m a square so that means h square by 8 m a square so uh, e1 is called the ground state energy of the particle so uh, you just see here uh, you know the energy general energy again value it has value n square by square h cut square by twice m is square but uh, when you putting n equals to 1 which represent the ground state energy so uh, ground state energy of a particle uh, is never zero okay you, s you see here it has a particular value it is not zero so this is a uh, very important one so uh, you can also find out the first excited state energy second excited state energy third excited state energy so on by putting n value is equal to 2 3 4 and so on okay in the expression of e so if you substitute that value you get the different discrete value of e that is e2 for n2 that is 2 pi square h cut square by m a square for uh, e3 that means n value equals to 3 you will get 9 pi square h cut square by 2 m a square and for n value equals to 4 you get e4 that is equals to 8 pi square h cut square by m a square so uh, these all are also discrete value and the spacing between nth and n plus 1th energy level uh, that means two consecutive energy level has the energy difference daily that is equals to n plus 1 whole square e1 minus n square e1 so that means 2n plus 1 e1 so this is the energy difference between uh, corresponding two state consecutive energy state so here i have shown you uh, the energy level diagram of a particle in one dimensional potential box so you can see from the diagram how it will behave for n equals to 1 2 3 4 and so on okay and uh, so energy uh, e1 corresponding to ground state which has a particular value now uh, the next one that is the wave function ultimately that will get that uh, it is a not non normalized wave function okay because uh, you don't know whether the probability for this wave function is maxima or minima so we have to make it normalized 
okay so uh, how you find out the normalized wave function that means uh, if you multiply that wave function here as uh, I, we have multiplied with some unknown constant a so that means for a particular value of a this wave function will be a normalized one okay now uh, we have to find out what is the value of this normalization factor or unknown constant term a to make the uh, uh, particle uh, make the particle uh, to be within that boundary region okay and chance of getting the particle will be maximum so uh, for that region uh, 0 to a uh, since the total probability of finding the particle that will be maximum that means probability will be equals to unity so uh, considering that condition we put uh, the condition for probability that is uh, integration 0 to a uh, shyster shy dx equals to 1 so uh, shyster shy that means the product of complex conjugate of shy with the uh, shy so which makes it uh, integration 0 to a mod of shy square dx that's equals to 1 so uh, now subsume the value of shy makes it uh, integration 0 to a a square sine square n pi x by a dx equals to 1 so now you will have to find out the value of a so a square integration 0 to a substituting the value of sine square theta uh, that is half into 1 minus cos 2 theta so half into 1 minus cos 2 n pi x by a uh, dx that's equals to 1 so from there uh, after taking integration we get a square by 2 within bracket x minus a by 2 pi n sine 2 pi uh, x by a uh, limit 0 to a that's equals to 1 now substituting the upper limit uh, then lower limit so upper limit minus lower, lower limit will give us the value capital a square small a by 2 that equals to 1 so that means the value of the unknown constant term capital A equals to under root 2 by A. So that means the value of the normalization factors uh, is under root 2 by A. Now if you multiply the wave equation by this value under root 2 by A, uh, then the wave function psi will be a normalized wave function. So here as I have told you your normalized wave function can be written as psi function of x equals to under root 2 by a sin n pi x by a. So uh, this equation shows that at psi 1 uh, function of x equals to 0 for x equals to 0 and x equals to a. So uh, here if you plot a graph with the position and with the wave function psi you can see here uh, shy uh, function of x has two nodes at x equals to 0 and x equals to a uh, shy 2 has three nodes at x equals to 0 and x equals to a by 2 uh, and x equals to a so it's a three, it has a three node okay and y th uh, shy 3 it has a four nodes at x equals to 0 x equals to a by 3 x equals to 2a by 3 x equals to a so shy n function of x has n plus 1 nodes so uh, the nature of this shy 1 shy 2 shy 3 are uh, shown in the figure now uh, the particle in one dimensional potential box what will be the eigen value of momentum now uh, for the nth state of that particle the momentum can be written as uh, p square equals to twice m e okay so uh, now if you substitute the value of energy eigen value e so that will give you uh, 2m into n square pi square h cut square by twice m a square so mm will be cancelled out will give you uh, the momentum p square that value equals to n square pi square h cut square by a square okay 
So P will be plus minus n pi h card by A. So uh, or P equals to plus minus n h by 2A as h card is a reduced Planck constant as value h by 2 pi. So the plus minus sign before n h by 2A uh, is due to the fact that the particle uh, moves back and forth uh, in the box. Okay. So this is the expression of uh, energy eigenvalue of momentum. Now, uh, what will be the probability of location of the particle? Okay, so uh, as you know, the probability of finding the particle in the uh, small distance dx from that means from 0 to a region, so that will be p function of x dx, so that's equals to mod of psi square dx, so that's equals to 2 by a sine square n pi x by a dx okay so the probability density p that will be equals to 2 by a sine square n by x by a so p will be maximum when n pi x by a that value equals to 2 n plus 1 pi by 2 so that now substituting the value of n that is 1 2 3 4 so on will give you the value uh, pi by 2 Five, 3 pi by 2, 5 pi by 2 and so on. So from there the value of the position x that can be written as x equals to a by 2n, uh, 3a by 2n, 5a by uh, 6 and so on. So here a uh, graph is shown uh, which shows the variation of probability density with the position so at uh, x equals to 0 and x equals to a, uh, the probability shows two nodes. So the uh, first one is for uh, mod of psi square, uh, that is probability. Second one uh, shows the three nodes and third one shows the four nodes. Okay. Uh, the result from those predicted by classical mechanics is that the probability of finding the particle uh, in a small uh, dx is dx by a and the probability density uh, rho that is equals to 1 by a is constant as represented by a dotted straight line. So uh, these are the reference book that you may consider. The evaluation process is same, that means you have to appear for an eight semester exam for 70 marks and internal exam for 30 marks. So, uh, hope all of you are enjoyed and understand today's class. In next day, I will solve this one dimensional potential box uh, in a uh, form of three dimensional potential box, okay, particle. So, uh, in next day's class, it will also very important because uh, for with the concept of today's class, you have to solve the particle in a three dimensional potential box. So, thank you.